welcome to this week's video. The weekend finally here, so we get to head out. We're gonna go about three hours north to a place called the Lost 40. This is a little secret with a lot of history. I'll explain more when we get there, but first we gotta get on the road. opener this weekend here in Minnesota. We'll have to see if this affects our ability to find a camping spot. It's something in the last 20 years how fishing opener is just not what it used to be. Same with deer opener. That used to be as important as Super Bowl or Christmas. The last few years just hasn't been that popular. Now that we're north of Walker, the roads have finally cleared up. There was a lot of traffic near Brainerd. During the summertime, it gets super busy. So I'm coming up here a different way than I've been before. Going through the Chippewa National Forest and there is a ton of camping sites up here. I definitely need to spend more time and explore this area. We're gonna be coming up on a campground real shortly. We'll see if maybe this is an option for tonight. Maybe I might stay here. Maybe we'll go on a walk tomorrow. I have no idea. I've got the bike in the back. All of these forestry roads up here are tarred right now. I haven't seen that before. This is awesome. They must have had a massive forest fire up here last year. A lot of trees are burnt. One thing's for sure, it's gonna make the grass really green this spring. So this is gonna be the Chippewa National Forest and the name of the campground is Winnie. That looks like the campground's on a lake too. Wouldn't it be awesome if we were the only ones here? With the tar roads, I'm gonna bet that this place gets pretty busy in the summertime. These sites ain't on the lake, but it's completely empty. Well, now that we're getting on the lake, I can see we definitely got people here. Looks like most of them are going to be fishermen. Well, I don't think I'm going to stay here. With the people being here, already on the lake, I'll find some other place a little bit more private. We're going to get going on this hike, and then I'll tell you guys a little bit about a place called the Lost Forty. We've got about 30 miles before we hit the hiking trail. Uh, it says it's gonna take us an hour to get there. Looks like it's a lot of dirt roads. So we'll just take it slow and see what happens. It's a beautiful drive, tell you what. past a lot of down branches in the road. You guys can see the condition of the road. It's not too bad, it's really rutted. But this is definitely why it's gonna take me an hour to go 30 minutes. We're off the 
forestry road back on a regular county road and I have not seen a car since the campground. Maybe this hike this afternoon will be all by ourselves. I'll catch you guys up on a little bit of Minnesota history before we get to this hike. So in 1849, Minnesota was just a territory, but the logging industry was in full swing. By 1857, the Survey General Office was established and they started plotting out lands and surveying northern Minnesota. In 1858, Minnesota is finally granted statehood. The reason why this place is called the Lost 40 is because it never showed up on any of those surveys. I'll fill you guys in on a little bit more of that when we get there. I was looking on the Onyx map and I found that there's a campground about two miles from where the hike is. I thought, why not? check it out see if I can stay there tonight then I'll take the bike two miles back to the trailhead hopefully this works it looks like this is the road nothing signifies that it's a campground yeah I don't think that's a campground let's go check this out There's really nowhere in here that's even remotely close to being flat. That's the problem. And there's no way the truck and camper are coming up here. I think I could park here and then use the jacks to lift up the back just to kind of level the truck out. You guys might remember I did something just like this last year. I was in New Mexico on the side of a mountain, had to release my quick guns and lift up my camper to level it out. I stayed there for two days, didn't have any problems. I think this will work just fine for one night. Well, it's a couple of miles up to the trailhead. Looks like it might rain. Hopefully it doesn't. get this locked up. So what I learned about the forest, the oldest tree in here is about 250 years old they figure. And the tallest tree in here is about 120 feet. The story on this place, it's an interesting one. 
So what we know is Josiah King came out here in 1882 with the three-man crew to survey this area. As the November wind swirls snow around the hardy men, they survey the six square mile area between Moose and Cognitan Lakes. Perhaps it was the chilly weather, or the desolate swamps, or just the difficult work that caused the crew to plot Cognitan Lake about a half a mile further northwest than it actually lies. Whatever the cause, this air hid a stand of virgin red and white pine that likely would have been sold for timber. Over time, the area became known as the Lost Forty. So right now, they say there's only about 5% of Minnesota's original old growth still standing here in the state. The whole trail here, a little over three miles, and it's really not that bad of a hike. I'm a little worried about my bike. That lock takes about 30 seconds to bypass. This right here is why Josiah King had a hard time plotting out this land back on that cold November day. This 40 acres is surrounded by this right here, low-lying swamps. For those of you that follow along on the videos every Tuesday, see that there's getting to be a lot more leaves on the trees and the grass turning really green. I think it has a lot to do with the warm temperatures we've had the last week and the amount of rain. It has been nonstop rain. First time I found out about this place, I was almost expecting it to be like uh, redwoods in California. Really didn't know what to expect, how big the trees were gonna be out here, but it's nothing like that. It's just tall old pines, really cool. So if you're wondering how long it was before they realized the air, well, it wasn't until the 1960s that they were up here surveying again and they realized that this place exists. Let's see if that bike is here. Nice. There's no leaves on the trees, but this camper is still really hidden back here. Now I have to make a decision if I'm gonna be going out and doing any fishing tonight. I will say this spot is the perfect spot if you had a tent. I'm hoping later tonight the wind dies down a little bit. Right now it's pushing into the shore. I'm sure I could barely even throw a spinner out there. For now, I think I'm gonna head back into the camper, load up some of this video footage onto the computer, take a little break. I'll catch up with you guys later. We're gonna head down to the lake. I'm gonna try casting out a beetle spin. Started raining this afternoon, so sat inside the camper, made a pot of coffee, 
it stopped raining. I'm hoping that I can maybe land into a couple of fish. I'm just using a beetle spin. Today is walleye opener. Well, there's some swans out on the lake. This really is a nice camping spot. I love finding these places totally free. I found this place on the Onyx map. I couldn't see it from Google Maps. It's not listed as a campground anywhere. They don't even have it listed as a forestry campground. But Onyx showed it was here. I use that app quite often. How pretty is this? We got the loons out there, the swans in the background. Just gorgeous. Well, there's no boat landing on this lake. There's no houses on it. I wonder if these fish are gonna see my artificial bait and think what the heck, or if they'll bite. I tried digging up a few worms, but couldn't find any. That loon is getting really close. I don't know if you guys can see that, but there's a beaver coming in. He's coming right towards me. <laughs> I mean, he is coming close. What are you doing? He's gonna splash. Yeah, there we go. He's saying, you're in my territory and you need to leave. How cool is that? Wow, he is not scared at all. Jeez Louise. Thought for a second he was gonna come up here and chew on my leg. Yeah, that beaver, he's, he showed me who was the boss. He came right up here. He wasn't scared at all. We'll set the coffee there, go find a new place to fish. He's following me. He just splashed again. That beaver is following me all the way around this lake. He's saying there is no way you're going fishing here. Oh, there's a couple of them. Oh, well, they brought reinforcements. So I have some chicken breasts in like a citrus lemon marinade and we're going to be making tacos out of that tonight. So I'm going to start up the grill and we'll get the chicken done. Chicken right now is about the only affordable meat that you can buy. Steak prices are just crazy right now. But this chicken you can pick up for a couple of bucks yet. We're going to cook these on low, that way they don't burn. And then we'll go inside and make these tacos. So the meal tonight, it's not an actual recipe. I went to Cub Foods today. They had the chicken breasts on sale for two bucks a piece. And then they had a thing of pico de gallo on sale. So I thought, why not take the lemon chicken, little pico, should be good. There's a noise across the road that I have never heard before. So give you a good look at where I'm at. There is no homes for miles around here. 
the sound that I heard was this whooping sound. It was a whoop, whoop, but it was uh, like a real guttural noise and almost had reverb to it. Strange. So I don't have any cell phone service here. I do have one bar on the phone, but it's not even letting me send out a text message. A couple of weeks ago, down in the comments, I had a discussion with the viewer about getting a cell phone booster. And I definitely think that's something that I am going to do this year. It's nice to be able to stay in contact with people in cases of emergencies when you're out here. The other thing is, I turn on the radio. I don't really have anything for radio stations out here. I tried the weather radio from my scanner, and that's really sporadic. So, if there was a big storm, something like that, you really wouldn't know. So in the weeks to come, what I will be doing is installing a cell phone booster to see if I can get a little bit better reception when I go out into these areas. That whooping sound across the road's gotta be a big bird. I'm thinking that they are gonna be done by now. Perfect. That lime smells really good. These things are still really juicy. Time to get these things cut up. So first we'll start off with a little bit of the chicken on there. some of the pico. Just a little bit of the cabbage for some crunch. And we're gonna go with a little bit of this taco cheese, because why not? And then we'll finish it off with some of this jalapeno cheddar. It's really good. The lime in the chicken, along with that pico, makes it seem so fresh. It's really light tasting, which is good, and it's this late at night. I like to eat supper a little bit earlier, so that way it's not sitting in my stomach when I go to bed. I'm gonna have a couple of these, get in the shower, call it a day. morning what an awesome place this was to stay last night but this morning we got to get on the road get this thing packed up These weekend adventures have been just what I needed to keep my mind reset, refreshed, keep my internal batteries recharged. I hope to be taking a couple of road trips this summer, but for right now, Minnesota has got so much for me to explore. These weekend trips have been working out just perfect.
So 12.9 miles per gallon on that run. Not too bad. That's another video in the bag. You know, it's funny because I woke up Saturday morning. I had no idea where I was going to go, what I was going to do for a video by Saturday night, getting bullied by a couple of beavers, having the time of my life, not catching any fish, but seeing the most amazing sunset. And those are the adventures that I love when I'm in the truck camper. I want to thank you guys. You stuck around the whole time. And until next week, be kind, be honest. See you down the road.